Welcome, curious minds, to another deep dive. Get ready, because today we've got an insight that's, well, it's not just news, it's really reshaping how we think about the universe's very first moments. We're plunging into the detection of oxygen, believe it or not, in the most distant galaxy we've ever confirmed, JE's GSZ-14-0. And this isn't just some uh, neat little factoid. It seriously challenges decades of astronomical theory. It's like, imagine walking into a nursery expecting newborns and finding a fully grown adult there. That's kind of the vibe. Exactly. It's a huge discovery. Yeah. And what makes it so solid, so robust, is the teamwork involved. We're talking about two of the most powerful eyes we have on the universe, the James Webb Space Telescope out there in space, mm -hmm. and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, LMAA down here on Earth. Their combined power is what led two separate research teams, uh, one led by Stefano Carniani, the other by Santos Xia, actually confirm this independently. Wow, independent confirmation, that's huge in science. It is, and they both published in really top tier journals, astronomy and astrophysics and the Astrophysical Journal. Mm. So the finding itself is, well, pretty much unquestionable. Okay, let's try and unpack this. It's a lot to take in. First, the galaxy itself. JD's GS Z140, so it's officially the farthest one we've ever confirmed. That's right, farthest confirmed galaxy. It's out in the Fornax constellation. And the distance. This is the part that just uh, blows my mind. The light we're seeing now left that galaxy 13.4 billion years ago. 13.4 billion. It's almost impossible to really visualize that time scale. Those photons traveled across almost the entire history of the universe to reach us. So we're essentially seeing this galaxy as it was when the universe was incredibly young, less than 300 million years old, just a tiny fraction of its current age. Precisely. Just after the cosmic dawn, really. A cosmic blink after the Big Bang. Now, you mentioned the telescopes, Webb, the James Webb Space Telescope. It sort of spotted it first with its infrared vision, right? Peering back through all that time and dust. Yeah, Webb's infrared capabilities were crucial for initially picking out this incredibly faint ancient galaxy. It can see that extremely redshifted light that visible light telescopes just can't. But ALMA, ALMA was the one that found the oxygen. That's the key part. Webb found the galaxy, ALMA found the oxygen in the galaxy. LMA is just this incredible facility. It's not one dish. It's uh, 66 ultra-precise antennas spread out across the Atacama Desert in Chile. Super high, super dry, perfect conditions. Right. And they all work together as one giant telescope, essentially. It operates in millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths, which is exactly where you'd expect to find the uh, spectral fingerprints of elements like oxygen from that far back. And the precision you mentioned that's critical. Oh, absolutely critical. LMA pinned down the distance to this galaxy with, well, frankly, astonishing accuracy. We're talking 0.0005%. What does that even mean in real terms? Okay, think of it like this. Imagine measuring a distance of one kilometer. LMA's accuracy here is like being off by only five centimeters over that whole kilometer. Wow, okay, that's precise. It really is. And that precision is what gives us the confidence to say, yes, this oxygen signal is definitely coming from a galaxy that existed just 300 billion years after the Big Bang. Hmm. It removes any doubt, you know, it locks it in. And that's why it's such a fundamental challenge to our existing models. And that extreme distance means the light is incredibly redshifted. So ALMA picking out those faint, stretched out oxygen fingerprints. It's just, yeah, a testament to how far astronomy has come. It really is jaw-dropping technology. But it leads to the big question. Why is finding oxygen this early so, so profound? What does it actually change? Right, because astronomers talk about heavy elements, which sounds, you know, technical. It does, but it's actually simple. In <laughs> cosmology, heavy elements basically means anything that isn't hydrogen or helium, everything else on the periodic table. Stuff like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, the stuff we're made of. Exactly. Those elements weren't made in the Big Bang. The universe started out essentially as just hydrogen and helium with maybe trace amounts of lithium. Everything else had to be forged later inside stars. Through nuclear fusion, right. And then when the stars die... Especially the massive ones, yes. <laughs> when they die, they often explode as supernovae. And those explosions are what scatter these newly created heavy elements out into the galaxy, enriching the gas clouds that will eventually form the next generation of stars and planets. So the old thinking was that this process takes time, a lot of time, Dumb. billions of years, right? So these very first galaxies, they should have been almost pristine, mostly just that original hydrogen and helium. That was the standard picture, yes. Chemically quite primitive or untouched, as you say, you'd expect the heavy elements like oxygen to build up slowly, gradually over cosmic history. 
So how much does this discovery, this oxygen, actually wreck that picture? Is it a little tweak, or are we talking a full rewrite? Oh, it's leaning much more towards a rewrite, I'd say. This galaxy, JG's GSV-14-0, it isn't just showing some signs of chemical evolution. It's way more advanced than our models predicted for that era. How much more? Well, according to the researchers, it has something like 10 times more heavy elements, including that oxygen, than the models said should be possible that early on. 10 times? Okay, yeah, that's not a tweak. Not at all. It implies that the whole cycle of star birth, death, and enrichment was happening much, much faster in the early universe than we thought. I saw one of the lead authors, Sander Shah, used a great analogy. He said, uh, this discovery is like finding a teenager in a room where you were only expecting newborns. That captures it perfectly. We expected these infant, chemically simple galaxies. Instead, we found this, well, cosmic adolescent that seems to have already gone through quite a bit of development. It really makes you question the fundamental assumptions about how galaxies get started. Because for that much oxygen to be there, it means stars had to form, live their lives, die, and spread that oxygen around and not just one generation, maybe. Exactly. Multiple generations, likely, of massive stars. They must have formed, burned through their fuel incredibly quickly, exploded, and seeded the surrounding gas with oxygen and other heavy elements. But fitting all that into less than 300 million years, that's the puzzle. That time frame just seemed way too short based on our previous understanding. So how could it have happened so fast? It's like the universe was in a huge rush. Well, that's what astronomers are grappling with now there are a few ideas kicking around. Mm -hmm. One possibility is that star formation itself was just incredibly efficient back then, maybe even hyper-efficient. Hyper-efficient, meaning more stars forming faster. Yes, and perhaps different kinds of stars. We talk about population three stars. These are the hypothetical very first stars ever formed. Theory suggests they might have been enormous, hundreds of times the mass of our sun. Wow, giants. Absolute giants. Okay. And because they were so massive, they would have burned incredibly hot and incredibly fast. They might have only lived for a few million years before exploding as extremely powerful supernovae. Scattering those heavy elements very early and very effectively. Precisely. If the first few generations of stars were dominated by these giants, rather than a mix, including smaller, longer-lived stars like our sun, what astronomers call a top-heavy stellar population, that could dramatically accelerate this chemical enrichment process. Okay, that makes sense. What else? Another idea, maybe related, is that galaxies themselves just started forming earlier than we thought. Our models currently point to maybe 200, 300 million years after the Big Bang as the main starting point. But what if it was even sooner? Say, 100 million years? That would give everything more time, wouldn't it? More time for those stellar generations to cycle through before we observe them at the 300 million year mark. It would. It pushes the whole timeline back. And then there's the environment. The early universe was likely a much more crowded, chaotic place. Meaning more collisions, galaxy mergers. Exactly. Frequent galaxy mergers could have been a major factor. Imagine these young, gas-rich galaxies smashing together. That could pool their resources, trigger intense bursts of star formation, and mix up their chemical contents much faster than if they just evolved in isolation. So super efficient stars, maybe starting earlier, and lots of early mergers. It paints a picture of a much more dynamic, rapidly evolving early universe. That seems to be what the data is pointing towards, yes. Okay, let's shift gears slightly. Why should someone listening right now really care about oxygen in a galaxy 13.4 billion light years away? What's a so what for us beyond just rewriting textbooks? Well, it connects to some really fundamental questions, including the search for life. Oxygen isn't just any heavy element. It's one of the most abundant ones in the universe today, after hydrogen and helium. And crucially, it's uh, it's a key ingredient for life as we know it. Water, yeah. H2O, right? Right, can't have water without oxygen. Or rocky planets like Earth, for that matter. Silicon dioxide, iron oxides. Oxygen is fundamental to planetary geology, too. So finding it this early, it has implications for habitability. Potentially, yes. Yeah. It's a really exciting link. Now, to be clear, the oxygen LMA detected is gaseous oxygen atoms floating in the interstellar medium, the space between stars. It's not like breathable air or oceans yet. Okay, important clarification. But its presence in such large amounts so early tells us that the basic chemical building blocks needed to eventually form rocky planets, and perhaps even life, were available 
much, much sooner than we used to think. It suggests the potential for habitable environments could have arisen earlier in cosmic history. Exactly. It implies that the chemical foundations for rocky worlds might have been laid down far earlier than our models previously allowed. If planet formation could start sooner, then maybe, just maybe, the timeline for life emerging elsewhere in the universe could also be pushed back. That's a, that's a pretty profound thought. It edges us closer to answering that huge question. Are we alone? Or maybe, how common is life out there? It definitely reframes the question in terms of when life might have first become possible. It opens up the very early universe as a potential epoch for habitability in a way we hadn't seriously considered before. So what's next? How do astronomers follow up on this? More looking. Absolutely. Webb will keep searching for even more distant, even earlier galaxies. And LMNA is undergoing upgrades that will make it even more sensitive. Meaning they could find other elements too, not just oxygen. That's the hope. Detecting things like carbon and nitrogen in these incredibly distant galaxies would give us a much richer picture of the early universe's chemistry. And then there are the next generation telescopes coming online. Like the Square Kilometer Array, the extremely large telescope. Precisely. They'll provide different perspectives, different wavelengths, giving us a more complete, multi-dimensional view of these ancient cosmic structures and their contents. And the theorists, are they scrambling to update their models? Oh, you bet. They're already hard at work. Building new simulations that incorporate faster star formation, maybe different types of early stars, different ways elements get mixed around in those early galaxies. It's this constant, powerful feedback loop. Observations push the theory, theory makes predictions, new observations test them. It's amazing how one discovery can ripple through the whole field like that. It really is. It highlights that, you know, even after decades of incredible progress, the cosmos still holds plenty of surprises for us. It's a humbling reminder, isn't it, that we're still just beginning to piece together the full story. I think Stefano Carniani, one of the lead researchers, put it beautifully. He said something like, this detection has opened an excited brand new perspective on the earliest stages of galaxy evolution. Yeah. He went on, each time we enhance our ability to observe the distant universe, we uncover phenomena that defy our expectations and compel us to rethink the story of cosmic history from its very beginning. Rethink the story from its very beginning, that says it all. So as we wrap up this deep dive, maybe the thought to leave you with is just that. Keep looking up, stay curious. What other assumptions about the universe are waiting to be overturned? What other unexpected discoveries are hiding out there in the deep dark, waiting for us to build the eyes to see them? Until next time, keep exploring.